One often hears the expression, Christmas is for children. Another variation of that would be, Christmas is a magical time. This is true if you're thinking of Santa Claus and gifts under a tree, if you're thinking of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, if you're thinking of snowmen, and we allude to that in passing. But no, we're not here to celebrate any of that this evening. We are here to celebrate the incarnation of Jesus, God with us, Emmanuel. We need to resist the temptation to make what happened that first Christmas evening a cute thing. It was anything but cute. God did a very gutsy thing that evening. God, the eternal word, took on human flesh. And that's why at the proclamation of the gospel, we proclaimed it from the midst of the faith assembly. God became one of us. It's almost as if down through the millennia, God was trying to figure out, how can I get through to this lot? Ongoing creation, signs and wonders, the prophets, but we still didn't get it. So almost as if the light went on over God's head. I've got an idea. I'll become one of them so that they in turn can become like me. I'd like to kind of break this down into kind of a Trinitarian understanding of the Incarnation. For adult Christians, Christmas is the feast of God sharing a Savior with us. That would be the first point. God is sharing a Savior with us. The Incarnation of Jesus as God-man to save us from the scourge of sin and death. The Christian scriptures teach one incarnation, and its purpose is given in John chapter 3, verse 16. God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but may have eternal life. We celebrate the incarnation today as good news because we have a divine Savior. As our Savior, Jesus liberated us from slavery to sin. By his suffering, death, and resurrection, he atoned for our sins. Every Christmas reminds us that we need a Savior to free us from our evil addictions and unjust, impure, and uncharitable tendencies. Let us remember the famous lines of Alexander Pope, and I quote, What do I profit if Jesus is born in thousands of cribs all over the world during this Christmas, but is not born in my heart? Let us allow him to be reborn in our lives during Christmas 2007 and every day of the new year 2008. How should we prepare for Christ's rebirth in our daily lives? As a first step, John the Baptist urges us to repent daily of our sins and to renew our lives by leveling the hills of pride, filling the valleys of selfishness, and by straightening the crooked paths of hatred. 
Our second step in preparing for Christ's rebirth in our daily lives is to cultivate the spirit of sacrifice and humility. It was by the sacrifice of the shepherds of Bethlehem and the Magi that they were able to find the Savior. They were humble enough to see God in the child in the manger. We too can experience Jesus by sharing him with others, just as God shared his Son with us. Let us remember that the angels wish peace on earth only to those who are able to receive that peace, those who possess the goodwill and the largesse of heart to share Jesus, our Savior, with others in love, kindness, forgiveness, and humble service.